Hi everyone, welcome back to Kinetity Woodcraft. My name is Jim. I decided to take another stab at an epoxy project, and I decided to encase some of the most commonly used foods in our kitchen into this project. So without further ado, let me show you how I did this. This project actually got shelved for a while because for some reason I cut all these pieces and then just never continued doing it. But here I am cutting out the lap joints, and this was before I made the router table. However, I then went back and redid the lap joints with the router table, which you'll see in a split second. And unfortunately, I bit off more than I could chew with this first attempt at doing it because it's going well, going well, and disaster strikes. And I blew the lap joint apart. But luckily that only happened on one of them, and then the rest went a lot better in cutting out the lap joints. Then once everything was glued up, I just did the quick and dirty cleanup by actually using the table saw and cutting off all the excess glue around all the edges. And by doing it this method, it helped keep the frame I created in a perfectly square position. <music> Next up is the form. I actually did this form a little bit differently than I usually did. I actually made the outside edges of the frame, and then this allowed me to put the Tyvek tape all the way around the outside edge. That way there was no seams on the top, and I only had to put caulking into the co bottom corners. <laughs> Then what we've actually been finally waiting for, putting the epoxy into the project. I put those two sticks in as guards to keep the coffee beans, pasta, and peas all in the right place. Unfortunately, you'll see in a couple minutes that that didn't work out quite the way I was wanting. So as always, I had to make a plan B with one of my projects, which I know is a shocker if you've watched some of my other videos. Also, I realized as I was pouring this that I was probably introducing more air bubbles than I wanted to because of how high I was pouring it from. So I went and got a stir stick that I had and used it as a slip and slide for the epoxy. That way it didn't have as far of a drop to do and was less turbulent, thus creating less bubbles. I wasn't quite satisfied with the amount of epoxy I had in that first pour, so I went ahead and got a second one. However, this is when I realized that it turns out coffee beans float in epoxy, which as you'll see will come back as an issue later on in this video. With realizing that the coffee beans were floating, I decided to try to weigh them down using a piece of plywood with a bunch of Tyvek tape on it and a dam of caulk, which I'm really glad I put that on there because once this was tightened down, it actually fully raised up to the top level of that caulk. Also to weigh it down a little bit more, I got to pull out my old blacksmithing hammers, which I thought would never see the light of day again. Luckily the dam piece in more ways than one came out with just the crowbar and some 
good old muscle, I really thought I was going to have to cut it out with the next part. So after spending about an hour off camera trying to sand this down without the help of anything, I ended up building the sled real quick. That way I could get a truly flat cut into this piece and know I would have no issues with the final product. Here's actually where you can see my mistake with the floating coffee beans. Where it freezes, you can easily see the sticks I use as dividers is sticking through the epoxy. And I'll show you how I fix that in just a couple seconds. However, first we need to go and try to cut out some more of that caulking that got cut up in the epoxy from the mold. I've never felt closer to the flash than what, when I watched this clip of me sanding. However, this is me going from 240 grit sandpaper to 320, 400, and then 800 grit. And this is how I fixed the divider showing. I went and drilled a bunch of holes into it that created a nice long line along that divider and then played the longest game of make it fit I have ever tried. This is probably worse than a thousand piece puzzle but I finally got them all to fit and then just covered them back up with tabletop epoxy instead of deep pour, since this was such a shallow amount the epoxy had to cover. It was actually right about here where my heat gun actually ended up setting off my smoke detector where I work. And thankfully I don't put audio on this because I use a few words that would not be YouTube appropriate. Changing gears though, the glue I'm using here is an epoxy glue you can buy. I'm using this mostly because when I was trying to put the legs of the tablet stand on, I noticed that there wasn't a perfect tight fit between the legs and the back of this. And this glue tends to help seal up some uh, gaps a lot better than just standard wood glue would and make a tighter bond, I feel, in that regard. So doing that, I then had to also do a very funny clamp because of the awkward angles, where I actually used the clamps against each other. That way they didn't shift with the 60 degree angle I placed on this. And of course, I can't do it gracefully, but if you're wondering how I know where to put the leg, I actually made a mark on the back of the stand before I even put the glue on. That way I knew exactly where to position it. Also, in about 10 seconds, you're going to see how you can use some items unconventionally because to ultimately make this stay balanced and not fall on me, I had to use the green painter's tape exactly where it was or else it would be off balance and fall. While well, not shown, I did sand after I attached the legs. I know sometimes sanding can look more like paint drying in terms of entertainment. So here I am putting on the flood coat of the tabletop epoxy. And unfortunately, this was the first time I've truly done a flood coat. So I did have a mess up, which I will point out to you in a little bit. I ended up ultimately solving that problem by taking it and re-sanding it back up to 320 grit from 90 grit sandpaper and then applying a spare flood coat and essentially what it was was I hit it too long in one spot with the heat gun and it ended up burning the spot right into place and I'll point that out once we get to that part in the video. And that spot right there where I'm adding more epoxy to right now is the spot where I mess up, which you'll see in about a few more seconds.
So I didn't show the fix on camera. However, as you can see, it cleaned it up a fair, fair bit. It did leave some extra air bubbles that I would have liked to see out. But overall, I'm very happy with the fix and that it worked. But now we have to move on and repeat the same process on the back. And this is where I finally learned that from now on, I will be doing first time tries on pieces somewhere where it cannot be seen. That way I cannot mess it up because this turned out very well on the back and covered everything perfectly. The one thing I would fix are the little bubbles in the bottom because they did stay in there. However, here it is completely finished. I hope you all enjoyed this video. This was a really fun build for me. And if you like this video, please smash the like button. Subscribe to my channel, that way you never have to remember how to spell Kittatinny again. And leave any questions or comments you have down below. Here it is, just as it is running. If you want to know what video that is, that's my workbench video. Please go check it out if you haven't. Once again, thank you for watching my video. Have a good day.